Welcome back. Uh, this is close to the final tutorial. Um, I decided to push back the exporting one because I wanted to include all the debugging in it. And I don't know how much debugging there will be, how many times I messed up in the plugin. Um, so I'll push that back to uh, tomorrow for another video. Be it could be a short video. It could be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, we I don't know quite yet. Um, anyways, for today, we're going to be creating the message task where it uh, prints out the message for each list uh, if the person has their required permissions and checks for expiry and interval and all of that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new class. We're going to call this message task and finish. And we're going to go ahead and implement. And this has this is an interface. Runnable is an interface. Um, what that means is basically it has a whole bunch of methods defined in it that have no body in it. That means they have no code. It's just some empty methods. And it's um, really great for creating a framework um, a bit, and a larger API. But um, anyways, in order to implement it, uh, you can see the red line under our class name. because we have to implement the method in Runnable public void run and this method will be called whenever the task runs so before you fill out anything in the run method body let's go ahead and create a constructor and a private variable in the class so we know which message list we're talking about when we're sending these uh, messages so we're gonna create a private message list called list um, we'll go ahead and make it a final variable um, and we'll make it our constructor also message task and we're gonna ask for a message list just like that and this dot list equals list make sure you have the this so we can distinguish between the two different lists the class and the inner uh, method variable so when this task runs every time every interval it runs we're gonna go through all the players that are currently on the server so for player p in bucket dot get online players for all those people that are all the players online, we're going to go ahead and send them. Whoop, I keep on hitting the wrong key. There we go. Uh, we're going to send them the message. Uh... So when I got to filling out this message or the body here, I kind of was like, wait a minute. I think I forgot something. And turns out I did. Um, I meant to add another method in the message list class. Um, you actually do that a lot when programming because I'm kind of doing this on the fly because uh, I think it's best for you guys to see how a programmer actually does it and thinks through the steps. Um, but I did forget a method. And what it should be, I mean, we could, we know, how are we going to know which meth which message to send to the players from the list? I mean, we won't know which message. If it's random, sure, we can do that. But how are we going to know if it's in order? Well, there should be a method for that. And that's exactly what we're going to make. So we're going to make a public string get next message. And it doesn't need any parameters, really. Um, so we're going to check if the list, which is this class, if it is random, if it is rando, random, then w what we're going to do is we're going to make an integer uh, random equals to math dot random times um, the what what did we name the list messages dot length dot size plus one and we're gonna make sure we put these in parentheses and then we're gonna parenthesis this one more time just to make it look pretty and that's a red line because it's saying um, it's not the right data type and we've cast integer onto this and make sure we've put the colon semicolon and there we go now we've got a random a number and we have to add one because this math.random returns a number that is uh, always less than one and in order to get the messages at the maximum size uh, you would have to times by one so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, return the messages at the random indexed there we go and if it isn't random then what we're gonna do is we are going to actually go up here and make a integer private int counter I guess we can call it equals zero 
And in this counter, we are going to go ahead and messages return messages dot get the counter at so that'll return the messages at the zero. Um, and also what we need to do if counter is greater than or equal to uh, no, 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 if it's greater than messages dot size, then we are going to reset the counter to zero. And there we go. That should work. And now if we go back to our message task, and now we can call the uh, player, well, we can do player dot send message list dot get next message, just like that. And just a little tip, actually, um, I'll go ahead and take that out. What we can do so we can implement chat colors in the uh, list is we can do chat color dot translate alternate color codes. And the color code we want to use is the ampersand and paste in that there. And now to replace all that with uh, color codes. Now, if we go back to it, our message API class, um, we'll add one more method. You can see here we have get enabled messages, message lists. We'll actually do change that to get enabled message list names and create a new method called, I'll just go ahead and copy that because we are lazy programmers message list and we'll change this to that i was wondering if it'll be it would be faster for me to just type it by myself um rather than copy and pasting but uh hey you never know um anyways so we're gonna make a list of message list and this is just for uh it's a good idea to have a method to get a list of string the names and uh message the actual object um so for message list list in what did we call it message list dot values we can go ahead and add list and then we we, we will return result and don't forget your semicolon and always remember to save just like that now we can get a enabled message list and the point of that method was to um, go back to your main class now and we'll go ahead and make another private method it's to uh, start all the tasks start tasks tasks that's a terrible word to say same with edited Ed edited in tasks they're just not good words they just kind of clash you know um, anyways uh, so we're going to make sure to call this start tasks method after we load all the lists. Otherwise we're going to have an issue, um, with it being, there'll be no lists created yet. Um, so for message list list in message, message API dot get enable message lists. I should change that to an S and we'll go back into uh, the API and change that to an S just because it makes a little bit more, a little bit more sense. Anyways, for all the lists, we're going to get the bucket scheduler and we're going to run a task timer uh, synchronized. It's going to be repeatable. Well, this will be this class. It requires the class that extends Java plugin and then it takes um, a runnable. But in this case, we're going to give it a new message task and we're going to give it list list. And next we're going to put in a list dot get actually we're not going to have any delay. Um, I think it was double, right? Yeah. Uh, list dot get interval and we're going to times that value times 20. There we go. And what is wrong? It's a long, it's not a double. Um, there we go. So the reason why we times it by 20 is because this value, the interval value was in seconds and the uh, value this to run a task, it goes in ticks and there's 20 ticks a second. So you just simple multiplication there. So now this will start all the timers for each list. However, now remembering 
going back, uh, we forgot to do permissions and expiry. So the first thing we're going to want to add is uh, check if the the message list is expired. So that's actually a pretty simple check. So if uh, system dot current time milliseconds is greater than or equal to list dot get expiry, then we will simply return and this will stop everything. And then and then uh, we're going to check if the player has the permission to even have this message. So if the player dot has permission, uh, what is this plugin called? Auto message. Uh, what did he, he called it? Receive dot um, plus the list name. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and send them this message. And just like that, we have completed the plugin. Whoa there, not so fast. We still have a few more things to do. I almost forgot about them. Man, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff um, with this plugin, but uh, it's all right because we can go back and add it later because we're just that good. Um, anyways, I don't know why I actually put this check there. We can just move it out of the loop as there's no reason to really have it there. Um, we also forgot to check if the minimum amount of players is there. Um, and now thinking about it, I think we actually forgot to add the minimum amount of players, or rather I did. Um, so I'll add it now. And we are going to, I'll show you a trick here. If you scroll over here, you can add getter and setter methods and it creates the get and set methods automatically for you. Go ahead and click that and it asks you the names and you can go ahead and hit okay. And we will go ahead and set min players to zero. And there we go. Now we're set up there. And now if we go back to message task, if the uh, bucket dot get players or no, 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 it's get online players dot length is less than uh, the list dot get min players. If it's less than that, then we are Actually, the minimum amount of players is the amount that are allowed to broadcast it to. So if it's less than or equal, um, then, you know, if it's just less than, then we'll return. Uh, then also we have to check if we want to log it to the console. So if we do, then um, we can add this down here. If list dot is, let's see, did we also forget to add or rather, I forgot to add the log to console one. I think so. What do you know? Okay, so uh, now we can go if list dot is log to console. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get, get bucket dot get logger dot log, uh, and then we'll set it to level dot um, info, and we will send the list dot get message get next message actually before I do that I just thought of one bug that will happen um, first of all we forgot prefixes and suffixes also um, we need to, we should make this a string equals list dot get next message because if we did this called that message mess method twice then it would get two time like two of the next uh, messages not just the same one so also we'll go ahead and add the prefixes and suffixes here uh, and the chat color now that I think about it so I'll just go ahead and grab that out chat color dot translate alternate color codes not chat color list dot get prefix get next message get suffix there we go now we can send the player the message and then we can also log the message and there we go now we have actually finished the uh, the plugin unless I forgot one more thing which I don't think I did I think we're good uh, anyways that's about it and I hear my phone ringing I don't know where my phone is anyways but uh, uh, anyways that's about it for the tutorial Thank you guys for watching. My name is Kenny, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.